Hey guys, what's up? It's Covert Code here, and in today's video, I'm going to be jumpstarting a new series called Zero to Hero. Now, what this series aims to do is train you guys, and basically, you know, if you're a beginner scripter, I aim to help you improve and become a professional scripter by the end of this series, okay? So stick around to find out how you can actually learn and get way better than you already are. Let's not waste any time and I'll explain to you guys the tabs that you actually need to use the script. Now there are around 4 or 5 essential tabs in my opinion which you always need to have open when you're scripting. Now if you go to the view button up here, click on that, I would suggest clicking on the explorer and properties tab, so it's this tab here and this tab here, so just click on these two, okay? And this is the most important one of all, the output. This is basically a sort of book which whenever something wrong happens in your scripts, the output will tell you that something's wrong. I would also go ahead and open up the toolbox, which is this. This will allow you to insert models and uh, you know other things into your game. And I, I would just have that open because it's really handy. The command bar here is optional. Um, it's, allow it's basically for single line scripts. So if you're not going to run any single line scripts, I wouldn't have that open, but in my opinion, you should, you should just have it open just in case, okay? Uh, and the final tab, which I would definitely have open, is this Insert Objects tab. So just go to the Model tab up here and make sure this is on, okay? This will allow you to insert things in your game, like parts, script, tools, and anything that you may need to actually work with. So let me just explain just a few of these tabs. Um, the Explorer tab, basically, this is your entire game, okay? Every single one of these is called a service. They are all responsible for different things. So, Workspace is anything you can see and interact with physically, okay? Um, for example, the starter GUI, uh, you know, all the, the GUIs that you see in games, like, you know, the buy buttons or the shop GUIs that you click on to open the shop, that is in starter GUI, okay? This handles anything that you want the player to receive when they spawn, okay? Server script service is one of the most, if not the most important uh, services. Um, basically, that's where you store all your scripts. And you would store them here because uh, exploiters cannot steal your scripts. So don't go around and just leave your scripts in workspace, because if you do, exploiters can steal your scripts, and you don't want that. The same goes for server storage. So, server storage is not for scripts, but exploiters still cannot access this service, okay? However, replicated storage um, is essentially the exact same as server storage, but the client or exploiters, for example, can actually access the contents. So, if you want the client to have access to something, and by client, guys, I mean the player, okay? So, whenever I refer to the client, I mean player from now on, okay? So, the client, if you want them to access something, um, you would store that inside of replicated storage. But if you do not want them to store, I mean, to access something, like if you have guns in your game and you do not want them to, you know, steal those or something, then you would keep that in server storage. Starter pack is also one of the, you know, the core sort of services. Um, basically, if you want your players to spawn with a sword, you would place the sword inside of starter pack, okay? Now, anything inside of that service, the player will spawn in with, just like the starter GUIs, but for tools, okay? The sound service, um, you would ideally store all the sounds in your game here, but you could also store them inside of the starter GUI as well, but ideally, keep them here. The lighting service, essentially controls your, controls your lighting, okay guys? So if you want your game to be darker, you would go here and, you know, um, I have a full tutorial coming up on how to use properties, but I'm just gonna use this just to show you guys what the lighting actually does. So if you want your game to be darker, for example, um, or uh, brighter, you would, uh, you know, fiddle around with these properties here, make it really bright, really dark, or something like that, you know? So that's what lighting is, your game's lighting settings, you know? It also contains information about your skybox. So, you know, the sky that you can see around you, that's the skybox, okay? It's just an actual box. If you actually type up skybox inside of the toolbox and just drag one in, you can see that you're going to change the sky. It's an actual box, if you guys can actually see the outline here. It's a box which 
acts as the sky object, okay? That's all that is. But you, you shouldn't get confused about this or like, you know, if you want to know more, go ahead. But at this point, I would just, you know, just know that it's used to modify things relating to the lighting and sky. Now, enough chit chat, okay? Let's actually make our first script. Click on server script service and go to the insert object tab, which you should have open, okay? Um, and just type up script. Now, for this video, we're just going to be using a script, like a normal script. I'll explain the difference between a local script and a server script, which is this, in a future video, okay? But just insert this right there and drag that inside of server script service. As I said, you do not want exploiters to have your script, so just store them here, okay? Now, if you want to open a script, any script, you would double tap it. So, just like that. Let me just zoom in here for you guys. Um, so like that, okay, it should be big enough. Um, so this here is something which comes up in every single script you make always, okay? It's print hello world. Now, remember the output which I told you guys to open, which I said, let me just clear all this up, um, which I said will have anything re relating to the script inside of it. So if something goes wrong, the output will have a message inside of it saying, hey, code code, something's wrong with your script, okay? That's the, the output. Now, printing, as we'll discuss in the next video, is essentially uh, logging or displaying text inside of the output, okay? So I'll show you guys in the next video what this actually does, okay? So just stick around, I'll upload the video instantaneously, like, paired with this one so you guys won't have to wait. So just go watch that next, and you'll find out how to print. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.